Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Hey, so I haven't been uh, putting out that much content lately. Been really busy at work. A lot of stuff um, in life has been coming up lately, so haven't had too much time. But um, I wanted to go over these new renders that Aptera released a few days ago. And this is the render showing the uh, Tesco motor and the new configuration of the front end. And, and you can see that there's been a couple, like lots of subtle changes or maybe not so subtle changes to the suspension um, and the layout of the chassis here. So um, I don't exactly know what's going on. So I thought maybe it would be fun to figure it out together because I'm sure there's lots of people out here uh, in the audience that know a lot more about uh, automotive manufacturing than I do. And maybe together we can figure out what these parts are because it's not entirely clear to me. So um, let's take a look at this. Now I was hoping that these would not be renders and this would be actual pictures of the actual chassis and the actual motor in the vehicle. I don't think that the chassis has arrived at, in um, Carlsbad yet. I'm guessing if it had, they would have released some pictures on um, Twitter or on Instagram uh, with the chassis, but I haven't seen it. You know, we have seen the Tesco motor on a test bed in the July update. So that's, we've seen the physical motor, but we have not seen this chassis. We've seen the, um, the battery pack that's gonna go into PI2, but we have not seen, you know, this, this casting, basically this large, large casting. So um, to remind ourselves what it used to look like, let's go back to this. So this is what we, this was the initial kind of layout of the chassis. You can see that there was this, um, this frame that had a metal front end that was um, curved like this. And you can see the suspension, this is the upper control arm is one piece and the shocks are kind of diagonally oriented here. And then you see like the back part is there, it is two pieces. You see there's one piece here and another piece here. And so there's two pieces to the back and then you have the same layout with the battery and the inputs and connectors towards the back of the vehicle, which seems a little weird because Seems like it would make a little more sense to have it in the front. I'm not sure why they did they did that. Maybe I'm guessing it was maybe for like um, the cockpit space. Like this, maybe this would get in the way of the footwell uh, between the two uh, front passing the two uh, the two front seats. I'm not sure, but they they put that there. So you're gonna have to have a whole high voltage wire go all the way from the back to the front. Um, and at least at, at this time, you could have one high voltage wire going to the rear hub motor, but there's no rear hub motor anymore. But let's take a look at this and just kind of keep this in your mind and then we'll look at this. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, let's focus on the front end at first. Okay, so what we notice here is that front metal piece is gone and it's replaced by this white piece. I don't know what material this is kind of looks like plastic because it's white, but maybe it's not plastic. Maybe it's metal of some sort. This has been confirmed just to be a, a, a piece to help with the impacts, like the front impacts. So this is a basically a safety piece and a energy dissipation piece. So it is some material that uh, is good at that. The biggest change I see here is, well, obviously the biggest change is there's now a motor, um, but you see that now the shocks are oriented transversely rather than diagonally like it was before. And you can see the axle here and the control, uh, the like the uh, steering strut here in the back. Uh, here is the steering column and you can see it's a, it's a mechanical linkage. It's a mechanical linkage to there. And there's gonna be, um, it's been confirmed, um, multiple times that it is a mechanical linkage with some electronic power assist at low speeds. And then the power assist is decreased at higher speeds because you, you just need less power assist. This looks like, this is probably like the reservoir for the uh, battery, uh, the brakes rather. So this is maybe the master cylinder for the brakes. Um, and then the configuration of this front upper control arm 
is much more complex at this point. So in this, the new case, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five pivot points. Um, and so, you know, when this upper control arm moves up and down, um, the suspension moves up and down, then it looks like it moving this up would move this piece up and then push this piece in against the shock. Now that seems very complicated to have that many pivot points. And now it's like one, two, three, three parts rather than a single part. And I'm not sure, maybe someone in the comments can tell us, why didn't they just hook this up uh, straight transversely here? Like just hook up to this because you have a single pivot point and with this pivot point, when this moves up, this will this part pushes inward. Um, now the travel distance obviously will be less, but I'm sure they could have like figured out some shocks that approximate the same thing. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but uh, they de they went from a one piece upper control arm to a three piece upper control arm right here uh, with m multiple pivot points. Okay. Um, the other thing I noticed is there is this uh, white piece, which probably is the same material as this piece. Um, I'm gonna go back and get a better angle right here. Yeah, you see there is this white piece, uh, which looks like it's not structural, but maybe it's also some kind of impact uh, piece, but uh, this looks like it's probably the same material as this front impact piece. And you see that the rear um, suspension control arms look significantly different. Like the upper part of this looks much bigger than the previous upper control arm. By the old design, so here's the old design, the lower piece is much bigger than this upper piece. And you can see that there's two pivot points here. So there's two different um, parts to this uh, rear suspension. So I suspect there's been some changes to the rear suspension as well. This chassis part looks fairly similar. Uh, you can see here, it's got, it, this part looks like it hasn't changed that much. But um, the other interesting thing is if you look at this piece, you can see how well this Tesco EMR3 motor fits in here. Uh, so that's what they were doing. I think they, they were redesigning this chassis to fit this a little bit. And now you can see it fits there. It's very, it's a very nice fit and um, looks very well designed for that. And from this piece, you can clearly tell that the front is the axle and the back is the steering control arm. Um, and uh, this, I'm not sure what this is. A little box that's only on the driver's side and not on the passenger side. It could be a fuse box. I think it's some kind of electronic thing. Not really sure what that is. Um, but yeah, you can see the transverse uh, mounting of the, the, uh, the shocks versus the diagonal. This, to me, looks a lot more elegant because there's less pieces. And I think, in my mind, simplicity is always uh, better. Um, all, all other things being equal. If you can do the same thing with less parts, um, that's less points of failure and um, probably makes it a more uh, robust uh, design that uh, has is more durable. Uh, this is this is a picture they had back when they were showing all the different uh, wiring. And I don't know how much the wiring uh, has changed, but you can see the high voltage wires have to come across here uh, because they put the inputs in the back. And coming back to this, um, you can see the the inputs to the battery pack are still in the rear of the vehicle. Um, I'm not sure what this is right here. I think it's maybe an anti sway bar or something. But it's kind of a weird place to put it on the against the lower control arm. But uh, that would be my best guess is that that's an anti sway bar. And yeah, again, here's this box. Not sure what that is. This, I'm pretty sure, is just the uh, parts to the steering column. 
Uh, I'm not, maybe this is like part of the assist, the electronic assist for the, uh, for the steering. The motor is perhaps in here. And you can see these are the uh, pedal, the go and the stop pedal. Not clear, you can tell this design does not have the skateboard plus and minus the, the, the recycled skateboard. So perhaps they're moving away from that and just going with standard like rubberized uh, pedals. Uh, I, I mean, I, I thought that was a cute um, feature and I liked it, but it, it, it's not like crucial to me whether, you know, whether they just go with standard rubberized pedals or recycled skateboard decks. Um, that doesn't seem like a huge uh, thing to me. Okay, let me know in the comments below if you guys noticed any other things uh, in these renders. Uh, these renders are super cool, but I do wish it had been a real picture of the actual uh, chassis. That uh, like that should be happening very, very soon. In the July update, they said that they would be building PI2 in August. And we are currently almost halfway through the month of August. So they have like two, three weeks to get this thing built. Um, according to their timeline. Um, and we will see if that timeline for PI2 sticks and see if there is a, a PI2 by the end of August. Um, the fact that we haven't seen a chassis physically show up there uh, makes me a little dubious about them hitting that, uh, that timeline metric. Maybe it'll be get pushed into September. But yeah, looking forward to seeing this in person or at least a physical picture of this chassis uh, rather than a render but the render is very very cool um and i but i do wish that they had kept this uh, upper control arm design simpler i think that would have made it more robust and easier to repair and um and just less complicated less points of failure uh, but yeah some of you guys that maybe know more about suspension design maybe explain to us in the comments why why you think they would have made it this complex um, all right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.